In this video, we're going to talk about economic value added, or EVA. Now you might notice I got a haircut, and since we're starting to talk about more advanced financial topics, I wanted a more hardcore haircut to match. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> Actually, it's summertime, it's getting hotter outside, so I wanted a cooler haircut. Um, but we are starting to talk about more advanced financial topics, and in this video we're going to talk about EVA. And I'm going to lay out the concept for you and how it works. So EVA is a way to translate your financial statements to really understand the core business activities and how you generate value. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take your financial statements, we're going to take your balance sheet, we're going to take your income statement, and we're going to tear them apart. We're going to tear them apart and then we're going to mash them back together in this metric we call EVA. Now, uh, in tearing your financial statements apart, <laughs> I'm not saying there's anything wrong with your financial statements. Accountants do an incredible job at putting these statements together that accurately represent the economic activities of your business. But we're looking for something very specific here. We're looking at your core business activities. And so I'm going to go through a list of examples of some of the adjustments you're going to make. And I think you'll understand uh, why we're going to do some of these things. So let's jump into these examples. The first example I want to talk about is a land sale. And for this example, let's uh, imagine you're a manufacturing company. So manufacturing is your core business, and let's say you're having a rough year. Let's say you think you're going to have a, a loss this year, and so you're looking for opportunities to generate additional cash flow. And you look across your business and you see that you have a parcel of land. It's undeveloped, you've never used it, and so now might be a good opportunity to sell that land. And so you go out, you sell the land, and you generate a large profit. Well, the correct accounting treatment would be to include that profit on your income statement. But it's not necessarily part of your core business activities, and that's what we're really interested in here. So to calculate EVA, we're going to pull that land statement out of your income statement. Do you see how that works? So let's use another example. Let's talk about capital structure. So for capital structure, you're going to make a lot of different strategic decisions on what the ratio of debt to equity is going to be for your business. And let's, in this example, let's say for your manufacturing company, you decide to use a lot of debt. And so each year on your income statement, you're going to have a large debt payment. Well, you could have decided a different capital structure, which would have had a different level of debt payment. Um, so when we're trying to understand your core business, we really should pull out the effects of your capital structure. So we're going to pull those debt payments out. And when we pull the debt payments out, we have to recalculate your taxes. Um, so let's look at a third example. Let's look at leases. And this becomes really important for retail organizations that have a lot of different buildings, a lot of different stores, but they don't actually own those buildings. They have what are called operating leases. So you have these set lease payments you make every year. But because you don't own those buildings, it's not really appropriate to put them on your balance sheet. But when you're trying to understand things in an economic sense, it really does become important to understand these leases. Because if you were to calculate productivity for your company, and you have a really low level of assets on your balance sheet because none of these buildings are on there, it, you, would, you would come up with a really silly value for productivity um, for uh, this large organization with all these buildings. So you really want to understand your leases and then add them back into your balance sheet. Um, when you're coming, when you're calculating EVA. And so this is just three examples. Um, there's actually a really long list of different adjustments that you need to make. Um, the different uh, business consulting firms, they have different variations of things that they do. 
Um, but it really comes down to a simple concept because at the end of these adjustments, you're left with two things. You're left with your profit from your core business activities and you're left with um, the assets that were used to generate that profit. And so we can use these values to plug into the formula for EVA. And I'm going to put that formula up for you now. Uh, now I'm not going to explain this whole formula in this video uh, because you can simplify this into the core concept and that's what I want to focus on. And the core concept is this, that EVA equals no PAT minus your capital charge. Now no PAT stands for net operating profit after taxes. And so you can simplify this even more and say that EVA equals your profit minus the assets that were used to create that profit. Now this is a very core concept in business and I really want to make sure that you understand the concept here. And I think the easiest way to, to grasp it is to think of that your business, think of your business as if it had no assets, zero. So you have no buildings, no equipment, no money to pay your people, no supplies, nothing. So what's left in your business in that case? Well, I would argue that you have a set of relationships. You have a set of processes and procedures. And you have a set of unique knowledge uh, that's unique to your business. So if someone were to give you the capital, give you all that asset, all the assets back. So you get your buildings back, you get your cash back, you get your supplies. You could then use that capital and flow it through your business entity to generate your profits. So uh, I'm trying to get you to think of all of your assets as capital that's being utilized by your business to generate the profit. Because that's what's happening on a theoretical level, on, in an economic sense. Um, it's like someone's giving you this capital each period. You generate your profit and then they take the capital away. And then they give it to you the following period. And so you calculate EVA by looking at your profit and comparing it against this capital that was utilized. And the difference is the value that was added. Um, it's almost like rent. It's almost like you're renting all your assets. Um, and if you're not generating a profit that's big enough to compensate you for using all this capital, you're actually destroying the value of this capital. Now, we got to think about this intelligently here. I mean, um, it's better to think about this on the long term, even if you're looking at it from a short term perspective, because you might have a bad year, for instance, but there could be a larger story at play. So we have to think about how we're using EVA. But the idea comes back to understanding what value is being created. What is the value of the capital that's employed? And if enough value isn't being created, you could use that capital elsewhere in better ways to get a higher return on investment. So this all comes back to productivity. <laughs> And because we're dealing with profit versus the assets that were used to create that profit. Now, EVA is not a productivity metric per se because it's not a ratio, but it is directly related to productivity because the higher the productivity, the higher your EVA is going to be and the better your income statement is going to look. And so this teaches us, EVA teaches us this central concept of business that is very important, and I'm going to put it up for you. Um, to get better EVA, what you want to strive for is to increase your profits while decreasing your assets. And this is a huge concept to understand. Uh, a lot of people think of business as you just want to acquire as many assets as possible. And that's just not the case. Um, it does you no good to go out and start buying buildings and buying land 
if all those assets aren't contributing to you creating a profit? What we want to do is we want to generate productivity. We want to take the assets that we have, we want to take each dollar and turn it into two dollars. Right? If we're just holding assets for the sake of holding assets, it's just dead weight on your company. And you could have taken all that money and used it elsewhere, either elsewhere in your business or in a different business to generate a higher return on investment. And here's the bottom line. Because there are investors out there who are looking at companies and calculating out the EBA. They are looking for areas of high productivity to put their money to work for the highest return on investments. So, <laughs> you as a business owner, you want to understand what your EVA is, what your productivity is, and where you're generating value. I mean, as a society, there's so much capital out there, and we want to generate as much value as possible. Capital tends to flow towards areas of high productivity, and we want to take and generate the most value from as few resources as possible. So, in the next video, we're going to dig even deeper into the EVA calculation, and we're going to talk about risk and how risk gets factored in.